figure out what kind of train wreck this is going to be. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, we're going. He didn't count us in this time. Huh? No, he didn't. No, he, 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 do he finger blasted the shit out of the front of the show. <laughs> you just weren't watching. Welcome to Warhammer. Yeah, there it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is Warhammer, brought to you by Second Pitch Beer Company and Battle Pub Games. Uh, Google it. I don't. I yeah, don't yeah, we're on. We're on the internet. Uh, Nothing's a secret. All anymore. the companies are on the internet. Uh, I'm Jazz. That's Jim, and that's Caitlin. Hello. Back for yet another episode. Hey. It's always great to have Caitlin. Thank you. Right. That's a good perspective. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We got things to talk about. With we 40K. do have we. There's things we have plans, we have plans uh, yeah. but we got to tell you what the show's about. So we got to do that first. Uh, so the show does two things. One, it discusses uh, war gaming and the Warhammer universe at a wave top level. There you go. Uh, yes. and what what do we mean by wave top, Jim? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> it means that uh, we maybe did. <laughs> A cursory glance at a wiki page. Yeah. <laughs> just bold. We and heard now, from a guy, from another guy, yeah. that this is true, and we're just like... I got this information seventh hand. <laughs> and, <laughs> and now you hear it. And now I'm going to tell you all about it, but I'm going to speak with authority, so it's got to be... Yeah. It's got to be true. As I always say, I use my uh, white male privilege to its maximum <laughs> right now. <laughs> so <laughs> Being able to talk on, a, talk on a subject. So you know how, like, Wikipedia is just... Free knowledge of people that make a page. Yeah, I really want to make one about the candles in the in forty k and just put this ridiculous still, information down. Lexicanum is a Lexicam is a wiki. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all still just community built. Yeah, and I, but I'm pretty sure there's like moderators. That sure, like, but I don't know if you did a full. There's like one sentence on there Lexi, about candles. If you did a full Lexicanum page about the candle making guild, oh, I, in I the Warhammer universe, and just like yeah. made it. Up. I think they'd let it live. It, like they just be like, if, this is a, canon now. Like yeah. this is just. It's like it's um, just there's part of it. There is a uh, uh, a wolf, uh, uh, space wolf uh, subsection or sub uh, a successor, and that the guy made all of like this stuff for it and everything. And like the one of the authors was like, "Yep, it's canon now." Yeah. yeah well, he wrote, yeah, the, he wrote a book the, on it. Yeah, he wrote a book on it. The spears or whatever. Yeah, they are. Spears they, of, they, uh, and they just do like ship to ship shit. Like yeah. they're just pirates. Yeah. And they're like, <laughs> like everything you wrote is awesome and it's canon. Congratulations, writing a book. There you so, go. If you do that, so that kind of yeah, that could be. Su- if you don't know what the fuck we're talking about, listen to the episode before this one. Yeah, and it's all it's bath, mostly about bath and Body Works. It's mostly about it's five thousand candles in the wind. About the grim dark bath and body works. <laughs> <laughs> grim dark bath and body works. <laughs> we're not going down that hole again. Bath that and, was that was a hole. You could still call it Bath and Body Works too, because that still works. No, it, yeah, that's actually true. Yeah, because it's literally. Bath items via body works. Yeah. From bodies. <laughs> but like put like a like a gear in the in the logo. Yeah. 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 Blood bath and body parts. Blood bath and body parts. Blood bath and body <laughs> blood bath and beyond. <laughs> blood bath and beyond. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> We've made a business. We right. only have to get to the forty yes. K universe. So yeah. We just we only have to we only have to survive another thirty eight thousand years and then we're, we're right we're there. Set. We're there. Set. I'm yeah. gonna write that story. I'm gonna put my uh, body in uh, Frozen animation right next to Walt Disney. Okay. I was just gonna try and pickle myself. Really? Yeah. I support it's a good that. Call. I like that too. We'll go different directions if we meet each other. Then we know <laughs> that one if, of us was right. <laughs> well, <laughs> at thirty-eight thousand years, it's like fucking told Jim the freezer wasn't gonna work. <laughs> we got also like throw one, some... one janitor away from <laughs> fucking it up. <laughs> we can throw some cucumbers in your juices and see how it turns out. Dill, yeah. spices, cloves, yeah. with cucumbers. I like it. You're, you're going to... What? Yep. What are you doing to my juices? You're. <laughs> you said you're pickling yourself, so you might as well throw some cucumbers in there. Yeah, make some old... Oh, actual... In my vat. In your yeah. vat. Yeah, 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 in, in your vat. Myself. No, yeah, when we pickle you, I'm definitely throwing in like, Just a couple some, like, cucumbers. good stuff. I'm throwing see, in like, see some what happens. cucumbers. I'm I putting, was like, more a couple thinking of, like, if, if I drank enough. No. I'm putting some. I would oh. just pickle. I thought we were literally pickling no, you. No, I thought we were literally pickling <laughs> you. Just, I, I want a huge <laughs> in a barrel. Jar yeah, too, no, I like was gonna huge... throw you. I was gonna throw you in a barrel with like some bunch of pig's feet and hard boiled eggs and just see what fucking happens. So when you said pickle, you pictured yourself drinking yourself to death. Me and Jim <laughs> no, no, were no. like, we're just gonna put him in a barrel. Barrel, just pickle, gonna pickle him. him. Pickle him. He's like, guys, I'm not dead yet. It's like we know. We know. Gotta be fresh. <laughs> You're gonna be dead. <laughs> You'll be fine. You'll be fine. I'll Don't worry, see you, you later. Can, I heard you could breathe the liquid. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Found 
foundation. Ugh. It's not true. It's not true. You can't breathe. Before they did it in foundation, they did it in a lovely movie from the 80s called The Abyss. Yes. With the breathable. Yes, with the, the breathable. breathable. They're like, don't worry. You spent nine months breathing liquid. Your body will adapt. And nope, like, nope. This still feels like drown. Yeah. <laughs> but isn't that, isn't that actually a thing? Like, they make that? No. Yes. No. no. Yes. No. Mm. Yes. If you have gills, sure. No, they. Uh, I think there's a thing. Breathable liquid. Yes. Mm. Bro, you got to. Mm-hmm. Maybe, we're you're, gonna, already, we're gonna, maybe we're, you're already pickled. I don't, yeah, it might be. That might be it. <laughs> Pony Boy just sighed. God I was damn, like, Pony Pony Boy, I'll find look it. it up. Look it up. <laughs> Breathable liquid. <laughs> Breathable, <laughs> liquid. <laughs> Breathable liquid. <laughs> Breathable liquid. That's, Jump just, in when you it's find just something. Gonna come, Google's just going to go, that's drowning, stupid. <laughs> 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 well, you can't breathe liquid. Even if you put oxygen in it, the oxygen will still escape. Water has oxygen in it. What? He has news. Is it a gel? Uh huh. Oh, can humans do it? No. So you can. It's technically science. I, I, science this sounds says. like somebody's like on my whiteboard. This works perfectly. <laughs> yeah. In yeah, this theory, is, this, this yeah. makes sense. This is sense. science. Yeah. The model says <laughs> the model this should be fine. The same guy that wrote that article built his own submarine <laughs> <laughs> from Camping World. <laughs> Wait, I need to have a Logitech controller first uh, for yeah. that joke yeah. to work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Holy shit. So, uh, so anyways, uh, one thing we do is gaming at a wave top <laughs> level. That's kind of what you get for wave top. We got and, that far. But the only <laughs> other thing that we talk about on this show, uh, well, that we have segments for, we talk about a lot of shit on yeah, this show. Yeah. Uh, is booze. 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 Specifically. There's no music playing. <laughs> no, it is. It's all push the button. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, beer order. we would like to invite you to the sexiest 15 minutes on the internet. That's right. We're going to tell you all about how to imbibe some of the most beautiful juices a man has ever produced. Right here on Jim's Beer Corner. But we're not doing the beer corner today. <laughs> <laughs> to bring it back full circle. Yeah. Not happening. Holy shit. That was an epic intro for you, though. I know. That was really great. And if we did it when we when I had a beer. I, I even dropped great. like three octaves there. Yeah, you did. It you, I went, I went you Barry were, White for you. That was... Mm, oh, I'm not Barry White, though. Yeah, Barry Gray. I'm going to go Barry Manilow. <laughs> <laughs> You're Barry, yeah. Maximum Barry Manilow. It's the only Barry I'm pulling off. Yeah, that's it's, a good Barry Manilow. Yeah. yeah. It, was a, it was a solid Barry yeah, Manilow. It was a Barry Manilow. Not but we're gonna light. do whiskey today, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go more a little a little more my wheelhouse. Yeah. Then um, yeah. I'm learning. I feel like I, I feel like my beer knowledge has expanded. Yeah, but uh, the thing I don't know that you know a lot about is um, whiskeys. Uh, yeah. So I'm a whiskey fan. Yeah. I keep a pretty big collection in the house. Specifically, I am a bourbon person, which I know nothing about. Um, I'm pretty good with the other whiskeys. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of varieties, so we'll do the whole like the quick little rundown. Um. The big ones that you need to know are uh, Irish whiskey. I love Irish whiskey. Mm-hmm. Uh, Scotch whiskey. Love Scotch. Which people typically just say Scotch, but it is Scotch whiskey. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have your American styles. So you're going to have American whiskey or sour mash whiskey, which is where like Jack Daniels and that kind of stuff comes in. Mm-hmm. And then you have bourbon, which is also an exclusively American style. Well, it's an American originated style. Mm-hmm. It is now made like there's a Japanese bourbon that's actually really good. Yeah. Um but bourbon is uh it's a it's a specific whiskey style, and bourbon is what we're going to be drinking today, and we'll get a little bit into who these people are. Um but bourbon is a specific style that we're gonna so bourbon is uh it's a still a corn whiskey. Um so, but bourbon is the only federally protected recipe. Mm. So the 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 Fed actually came down and said like it can only be called bourbon if you follow these rules. So there's actually a law for what defines bourbon. Nice. Uh, so that is it's good use of time. Yeah, absolutely. If you're gonna protect something, it's gotta be it's gotta yeah. be an American pastime. Uh, Baseball. So it's gotta be. <laughs> tell me they don't drink. They drink a lot. Yeah. So. Uh, it has to be 51% corn. Okay. 
Um, the can it be more than fifty one percent, or is it? It can least, be more, but it, it has, has to be at least fifty one percent corn. Okay. So it has to be a so the primary grain in the mash has mm-hmm. to be corn. Got it. Um, and yes, corn's a grain. For anybody that wants to like really freak out about that, corn is a grain. It's uh, also a great lump with knobs. It's also a big lump with knobs. And some corn. Uh, <laughs> it's also a band. There's also a band. Um, is that porn? That, that was disturbed. Disturbed. Whatever. Same close, thing. Though. That's close. Yeah. That's a little more corn. Yeah, that's corn. <laughs> that, that's a corn lead singer trying to beatbox, and everyone's just yeah. like, really? Really? Um, that's what we're doing today? Anyways, it has to be at least 51% corn. Uh, there is an ABV that it has to be when it comes out um, as what they call uh, white dog, which is pre-aging. Mm-hmm. So when it comes out of the still, it has to be at a certain ABV level. Uh, and then it has to spend at least two years and one day in a new char white oak barrel. It's a lot of rules. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So so you can't do any of that. Like, so if you, if you find bourbons that say that they are, they will say like, Finished in a rum barrel or finished in a then jazz starts uh, in, in a port barrel or whatever. Says, no, it's fuck it's, yourself. it's totally lying. a thing. Yeah. But that means if it's if it has the bourbon label on the front, mm-hmm. that means it spent at least two years and a day in a new char white oak barrel, and then they move it. Okay. They move it from that barrel into a finishing barrel. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, just like you don't, uh, you don't brew your beer like you don't ferment your beer in a barrel you ferment your barrel in your beer in your in steel and you steel, can do both but yeah I, I get you, what you're saying but then yeah. you like yeah. you have a beer right now that's getting barrel aged mm-hmm. so that is technically barrel finished yes yes yes. because yes, it's yes. finishing in that yes, yes, to, yes. Uh, it, to impart new flavors yep, you're under but it's not part of the brewing process right right so nope, i got i'm following yeah I'm following. so for the distilling process of bourbon it has to spend two years and a day during its distilling process in a new char white oak barrel, which means that they cannot repeat barrels. So mm. it's always got to be a new char white oak. So every time a barrel gets emptied, bye. That, that yeah, that cooperage gets moved off, and that's why you see so much other stuff that gets finished in bourbon barrels. Yeah, because they have to get because there's of a plethora of bourbon, bourbon barrels, barrels sitting yeah, around. They need, just need to move them. Uh, so this is actually um, this distillery is interesting. So, and I know a little bit about this distillery. And and that's can, why I say yeah. that they're interesting because they are both a distillery and a brewery. Yep. So yep. this is the, this is a, a San Antonio, uh, uh, San Antonio house called uh, Ranger Creek, and these guys are um, uh, veteran owned, the mm-hmm. whole nine yards, uh, but they also make beer. Yeah, and um, I know their brewer pretty well. He comes into the he comes into second pitch quite uh, often. They've got a decent one called um, San Antonio Lager. That's not bad. Yeah, I don't mind it. No, um, they do they do good work. And they then do good has, work. Their styles. He has a bassinet. Uh, yeah, he freaks a bassinet. But with their beer, uh, we might try some of their beers on the show at some point. But yeah, um, that'd be fun. Uh, their beer's good. It just doesn't stylistically. They don't make a lot that really. Mm-hmm. I don't they, know, trips they, they, my trigger. Like their business just, model has gone to the whiskey version. A yeah, lot more. and so uh, they've gone far more whiskey. They actually have some cool stuff there. It's one of the most brilliant business moves I've ever seen. So they have bottling nights that you can go do there. Yeah. So you show up and you help them bottle. You label bottles for them. I know. I've seen this. Yeah. But at the end, you get to take a bottle. Like yeah, so, you no, sit there and you put stickers on bottles. And then at the end, they give and you, you and they they they, they, they they give you beer and they, they, yeah, and they you, give you beer the whole time. Yeah. And then at the end, you get to take a bottle of the whiskey home. Yeah. You basically just have free labor. It's, it's just it's like brilliant. The most, like, it, it's it's, it's not it free, time. but it's cheap. <laughs> it's it's, it's cheap damn cheap. Labor. Yeah. Um, so we are going to try the Ranger Creep um, uh, .36, which is uh, part of what they're called their small caliber series. So it's supposed to be a thirty-six caliber mm. uh, Texas bourbon whiskey. Um, it is bourbon, so uh, they label all their stuff. So it's all hand labeled. So this is. Uh, batch number 86, bottle number 715 from the summer of 2021. Uh, and then aged under the Texas sun for, uh, for 25 months. So, so this, this is essentially, they are, they're hitting the bare minimum for aging. Yeah. Uh, you'll see other things on bourbon barrels and stuff that'll say like Mm -hmm. 10 year, all that kind of stuff. A lot like you see in scotches. Uh, so we're going to give this a shot. This is a, um, 96 proof. So for those of you that don't know how that math breaks out, that means that this is 48% alcohol. 
Uh, that's how proofing works. You take yeah. the percentage, you double, double it. That's why, your proof. why is that? Fuck if I know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I I literally, out of all the booze research I've done, I've never figured out why proofs are yeah. uh, double. I know it takes, I think it's 150 proof. I think 150 proof, you can light it on fire. I think so. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, which is why everybody uses 151 to do those flaming tricks with the with drinks. Because well, you're not just supposed to drink that? Oh, you can. Just, yeah, but no, that's what I did. Um, so anyways, we'll give this a shot. This is a. It's not as high volume. As far as uh, the alcohol is concerned. Uh, and before anybody freaks out, yes, we are drinking it on ice. Um, I, I, I will tell you right now. I don't think there's a correct way to drink bourbon, uh, or whiskey, or scotch, or anything like that. I think the correct way is however the fuck you like it. And yeah. that's I like it on. Rocks. That's the correct yeah. way to drink it. I've always drank my um, whiskey that way. I like it on the rocks. If there's a correct way to drink it, then tell me why any booze ever gets put in a cocktail. Yep. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. So like, so you're already fucking with it. That's also one. So thing, just like, enjoy. It. I've noticed like when I've gotten older, less cocktails, more straight booze. Mm-hmm. I've mm-hmm. less. I've, I've less like gone. You need like, to hide it less. Yeah, I don't care. I don't care. Like I'm not like worrying about like I need to make a cocktail. I'm just like, no, I'll just take that whiskey. Yeah, just make with it cold. Ice. Yeah, or I'll be like, oh, I'm drinking gin. It's like okay, gin with ice. Yeah, <laughs> just make it. And for me, I like a lot of ice. One, I just like my drinks cold. I just yeah. like a cold drink. Well, it's Texas. But two, whiskey actually, well, nice. for all the people that will tell you even to drink whiskey correctly, they tell you to splash it with water. It helps yeah. open it up. Yeah. Um, so for me, I put ice in. I pack a lot of ice in mm-hmm. because the more ice you have, the slower it melts. Mm-hmm. So I pack a lot of ice in. It gets my drink cold, and it slowly lets the water out, and it, it opens the whiskey up. It leads to the next question, um, which is uh, ice balls, ice big ice chunks, that kind of stuff. They're great. Um they're great. Just know that your drink's not going to be cold as soon as it's handed to you. Mm-hmm. Like if you get it on an ice ball and you pour whiskey over it, it's not going to be cold right away. Yeah. Because okay. you don't. You Surface don't, area. Right. You just don't have as much whiskey in contact with the ice. So it's going to take longer to bring your drink down to get yeah. it cold. Um, unless you, I, I guess you could pre-shake it. Like you could put it in a shaker, put ice in the shaker, shake it, and then pour it over the ice ball. But whatever. But Or you could, you know, just wait 10 seconds and let it get colder. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, anyways, so bourbon, what are we looking for in bourbon? Uh, a lot of the standard notes you're going to hear about are going to be, um, like raw caramel flavors, uh, corn, obviously it's a 51% corn mash at least. So that corn flavor is going to come through, but it will come through a little sweeter. Mm -hmm. Um, there is going to be a little fire on the throat. That's the alcohol content. It's just going to happen. Um, and then do you know how to retro inhale? Uh, tell so, me what it is, and I'll okay. tell you if I do or not. So what it is is you are – it's breathing through your nose, okay? Mm-hmm. But what you want to do is you want to have something in your mouth mm-hmm. and then be able to force the air essentially into your mouth and then out of your nose. And what it do is it will aerate oh, yeah. the what's in your mouth so that you can put it through your nose, and you'll get more flavors out of it. Yeah, okay. It'll start opening up more more on your palate. On the nose, I get clove. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. But um, it doesn't taste super clovey in the taste, but you can smell a lot of clove. Yeah, it's one of my favorite things about bourbon is the aroma of bourbon and the taste of bourbon are very rarely the same thing. Yeah, oh, that's fun. Okay, and, and what it has to do is it's it's the so this is a light bourbon at ninety six proof. Mm-hmm. It's nice. This is on the lighter side of bourbons. Um, I have a lot of bourbons at home that are you know, 108, 110, 114. Like, they're, I mean, really climbing the charts really? on strength. Um, obviously, a lot more fire in those. The alcohol content's really yeah. high. Like, Booker's would be one. That Booker's does. is fiery. It's yeah. good, but there's a lot of fire yeah. in that. It slaps um, you around. And, uh, but, so, the reason that the aromas are going to be different from the flavors in this is because it's a high-proof alcohol. Mm-hmm. Alcohol evaporates very, very quickly. Okay. Like, just in general. Mm. Like, pure alcohol, like, straight, just 200 proof, 100% alcohol evaporates. You can watch it evaporate. Yeah, we use that in the brewery all the time. To because clean. it's for cleaning and also but how quick does for it, spot sanitation, yeah, but and it's how immediate. It yeah. immediately goes away. Yeah. Like, you can soak an area with it, and it's dry it is, almost it's, instantly. Yeah, it's dry in a couple, like, um, a less than a minute. Um, but because of that, the alcohol is evaporating, and it's carrying all that aroma with it. Hmm. And so you get... More because it's and so since it's atomizing, 
you're getting more aromas on the nose than you will on the palate. And that's why that whole kind of like pushing the air through your nose after once you get it on the mouth, Mm -hmm. that lets you get a little bit more of a palate sensation because about 70% of our flavor comes from your olfactory senses or your nose. Um, So pushing it through the nose as you're drinking it will unlock some more flavors that will especially de-highlight the alcohol. It'll reduce the fire because you're going to get more flavor experience instead of just that, that whiskey flavor. Okay, yeah. But what do you think of it? I think it's great. Fantastic. Have you ever done that retro hail thing while no, drinking? No, not while doing it because with beer you don't have to. No, cause because beer, carb- beer very much also just tastes like it smells like it. But it also but the carbonation brings already brings that yeah. um those flavors out of the beer. Like that is already happening uh, naturally the way we make it. So you have to almost do like a like a forced carbonation, lack of a better word, kind of thing, so that you do get those smells from your mm-hmm. olfactory senses and stuff like that, which is very, very fascinating yeah. to me. Which is the whole beer and wine thing of that, like, that slurp thing that, that's to open it up and get it to splash around. Yeah. This you can do with that retro hill thing. Okay. Um, Cool. But, uh, yeah. So, um, and if you really kind of let it sit on your palate a little bit, you'll start getting into, like, raw honey flavors Mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. But that's from the natural sugars breaking down from the fermentation. Oh, cool. Okay. So you end up with some of those... Like I've always, processed sugar flavors. Yeah. I've always thought whiskeys and bourbons and that kind of thing are fascinating. I just don't know enough about them. Yeah. And, it's, and I love drinking them because that's like, unfortunately, when you own a establishment that imbibes, you stop drinking that establishment's stuff. Like, I don't yeah. drink beer anymore. Like, yeah. I very rarely drink uh, beer. Yeah. You and I have had some really good whiskeys together, though. Yeah, we have. Different We've times well. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we need to start breaking into wine though more often. We do we need do, to do more. We wine. need to drink a lot more yeah. wine. I'm a. I do. We're we a big wine. wine. Yeah, we're big wine people at the mm-hmm. house. I need to start opening up bottles of wine, but then I feel bad when I drink a whole bottle. We need to start buying cases. Yeah, it'd be a lot easier if we just started buying cases of wine. That's what you need to do. But uh, that's amazing. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. So I have a couple so, of questions because I've me. never actually been to a distillery, and I assume you have too. Yes. And the most fascinating part to me is the overlap between my industry and their industry. So, like, you want to know where like the deviations start happening? Yeah, yeah, that's always been very fascinating mm-hmm. to me. So, like, making that mash, like, I guess going into like the chemical process. So the of it, the mash, and then like where I will tell you right end? now, the mash is almost identical to your process. Yeah, that's what I've heard. So they have the recipe, um, and I'll, every all of them will tell you, you know, hey, if we're gonna release a new blend. We make a little tiny version, and we're, like, hand-pouring stuff and then checking those measurements. And mm-hmm, da, 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 yeah. da. Then once we have it, it all becomes automated. Yeah. So, like, we know it's going to be this much tonnage of this and this much tonnage of that, and that's what that's what's going in. Yeah. Um, so that all goes together. Water goes in. Makes a mash. Makes a mash. Same da, thing da, da, that da, I do. Because yeah. you have to cook it down to start getting the sugars to release. Got it. Um, and then after that, yeah, it gets pushed into a tank. Um, but yeast. then, but then the cook off and the yeast and stuff like that, what the big difference is the evaporative effect. Mm-hmm. And that's why those stills have those big, like yeah. the towers and everything. So you and the secondary chamber, so you're cooking it off, but you're catching all of that. And that, so that's the distilling process Right, is that by cooking off the liquid, you're then recapturing it by chilling it. It's condensing, and then that's what you're pulling down, so and doing, that's what's giving you your alcohol. So they're doing a mash, and then right. they are doing a fermentation. Mm-hmm. And then the, and then, and then, then, then a then, secondary boil of the liquid. And the secondary boil through the distiller, the dis, the distill stuff, or what the, the... The still. The still is the call. Yeah, 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 sorry. Yeah, yeah. And then that's where we get the white dog... Right or white lightning or moonshine or yeah any whatever of these you want to call, call it. it. So and moonshine and is essentially just whiskey that doesn't go into an aging process. Yeah, it's whiskey that I can't wait for. Right. Yep. Yeah. Um, which you just, so if you go to these and like we're gonna have white dog, I'm like that's fucking moonshine. <laughs> like that's <laughs> yeah. ju- it's just moonshine. Yes, but moonshine. it will kind of tell you where it's going. Um, but mm-hmm. like when we made the beer at your place and we tasted it, like it got thrown to the tank and then. We tasted yeah, it, and it was like, throughout the whole process. you kind of know where we're going. It's going to change, but we have a baseline now. We but kind now of know you, where it's going. Yeah, it's it's like being um, you know, a detective, and you kind of figure yeah. out, like, now we know um, this, and now we know this. One of the most interesting parts with the distilling process, the couple times that I've seen it, is finding the heart. Okay. So after it's done, and, it's, and, it, and so now we're going to the aging process, right? Mm-hmm. They will open it up, and the master distiller will literally watch this eye, and they'll watch it 
and I don't know the trick, but there's a, and they, they're looking for something. And when they see it, they will throw this valve and they will pull a sample of it. And if it's tastes the way they need it, they've hit the heart of the batch mm-hmm. and that's what gets thrown. So you don't use the head or the tail. It's just the heart of the batch that's getting yeah, and pushed isn't, isn't like the head and the tail is also like super like disgusting and bad for yeah, you? Yeah, so like the head is like just, it like runs chop full dragsters and then the tail is... Nothing. It, it, oh yeah, it's just swamp water. Yeah, and then it's that's that's fascinating. And then you have the heart in the middle, and that's what you actually want to drink. Yeah. And that's why, Doug, that you actually like. And it, I mean, it just it tastes like corn liquor, like it's because yeah. it is. It's yeah. just corn liquor. But I it's, know, I've always find it's it sweet and it's smooth, and but it's strong as shit. And then uh, and that's what get pushed over and then put into barrels. And then, and most of these places, like I guarantee you, they do it. They barrel age and then they cross level. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you have that's why you see stuff like barrel select. Or single selection and all that or kind of single stuff. barrel or, or single, single barrel. Yeah, um, that means that there was one barrel, and that barrel got turned into X number of bottles, and that's fucking it. Yeah. Um, so I have a question for bourbon or whiskey. Oh, but I like this bourbon too. Yeah. This one, no, this one's good. I like it. But I was curious about like the flavor stuff. So like with beer, you obviously throw in flavors. So, like if you want more of like a vanilla flavor, you throw in some Madagascar vanilla, like literally into the tank. But for Whiskey, how does that work if you're looking for more of like a spicy or a sweet flavor? It's, it's not gonna, necessarily the wood that's changing it. It's not the wood. Um, it's the additional grain that you'll put into the mash. So okay. it doesn't have to be all corn. They will mm. still put other things in. Ah. And depending on what goes in. So your 51% will be the corn, and then the ne- next 49% will be your flavor. Right. But it also kind of turns into, with whiskey... Mm. Um, this is going to sound really dickish. No... Sh- no if you dig it, you dig it, and it's your thing or whatever. At least in the bourbon world, the bourbon world's kind of uppity, but mm. yeah. Um, yeah. But with bourbon, it's kind of like you make bourbon. You don't you don't make vanilla bourbon. You don't make yeah this whatever blah blah blah. And that's why you don't see it. You see shit like Fireball, like cinnamon whiskey, because they can make that shit in a day. Yeah. Um. Like, there's no aging requirements on anything other than bourbon. Yeah. Um, and just so you know, Jack Daniels is not bourbon. If you go to a bar and you ask for bourbon and they go like, well, we've got Jack, that's not bourbon. That is sour mash Tennessee whiskey. It, like that is, that is not bourbon. Yeah. It's never been bourbon, never will be bourbon. It's not fucking bourbon. Um, but it, they can make that in like, it, it's literally like 45 days. Mm. Really? It, like they just have to get through the fermentation process and then they force age it and then. They so they force age it by putting it through like staves or something like that. Put it like through staves, pressure. or they have these weird like corkscrew things that they'll put yeah. in there of oak to increase the surface area, and then they'll fucking run it through that. Yeah, because um, we can use those. We can get those uh, for brewing as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so and it will get change those, the flavor. It will change the flavor, but it's like it's like if you want to barrel age something, this is how you do it. Like fucking right like now. right now. Yeah, yeah. Like um, there's like a whiskey in, company that puts an oak stave in their bottle. That actually wasn't bad, and it was in the name. It was called like something, something in stave, and they. It, but it was it was a true bourbon. They, it had spent two years in the day in the bottle, mm. and then they put a stave, like a spiraled stave. It was pretty in the bottle, and it was cool. So what it was is that it kept bottle aging, mm-hmm. essentially. So they put it in there for the purposes of like it's going to smooth the bourbon out, like it's going to because it's going to continue to kind of help because it was char too. So part of the char is the charcoal, yeah, and that's what's helping one leach the wood. But mm-hmm. two, it acts as a filter, and it gets rid of All some of the stuff. some of the heat that's in there, and helps calm it down. Yeah, because my immediate thought on that is, I immediately ran to beer, be like, oh, infection. But you're so high alcohol, it cooks it all off. Yeah, yeah. doesn't Can't matter. Happen. No, nothing, plus nothing grows fire out. kills a lot. Well, I'm saying like putting like a stave in like <laughs> it's in a charred. Though. Yeah, they don't just like crack off a piece of wood and dump it in there. Like it's. Mm. it's a, Charred piece um, of wood, but it's pretty. But then, uh, and oh, then you have all you have all the other. And if we keep doing these, then we'll get into all the other. Yeah, I think about, it's fun. I think I think it's about a cool a, thing to do. A couple like about angel things. share and all that stuff. We'll get yeah. into all that. Let's stuff. drink. Uh, let's 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 explore all booze. All bo- equal opportunity booze. Yeah, equal. We're opportunity. war hammered, not yeah. war beer. Yeah, no. we're war hammered. I'll do. Yeah. We're gonna Bordeaux next time, motherfuckers. Ooh, the twenty twenty. <laughs> I will Bordeaux's bring you a landing. wine that will blow your socks off. I love wine. We're in. We're gonna have a class. We'll do. We'll do like a classy day. We'll like dress up. You know who's classy though? Ooh. The Emperor's Children. They were. They were. They were. <laughs> they were passionate pursuit of perfection. Yeah, they were. Uh, uh, they if were anybody was going to make wine and bourbon and all that kind of stuff, it was going to be the. They did make wine. They I know it wine. can, and they made wine. They made wine. Uh, why am I bringing up the Emperor's Children, Jim? 
Well, because Hammer and Bolter, which is uh, part of the uh, Warhammer Plus, uh, Warhammer TV uh, area. If you don't have that, go get it. It's and five bucks. List, so it's cheap. five bucks. It's so cheap. And they put out you get a mini, really good don't you? Context. Still? content. Yeah, you still get yeah. a mini. If you, get at mini. the end of a one-year subscription, you get like a $45 character yeah, mini for free. Yeah, it's super cool. Yeah. But they, they put out really, really good shows. Yeah. And, and one of them that just came out today was called Eternal, and it had Lucius the Eternal in it. Lucius the Eternal. Lucius the Eternal. That, that, that Fucker. sketchy son of a bitch. Sketchy. Oh, you should have done the voice changer for Lucius Oh, hold on, the hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, can, I can fix that. Hold on. Ready? Uh, I think it's Monster. Uh, I don't know if that's right for Lucius. Yeah, yeah we'll do it. Do you have a clown one? Lucius the Eternal. <laughs> Very nice. There we go. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Was it the wah, 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 wah. Oh, it's the... Should have never shown him that air horn. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. Sorry, uh, I had to. So Lucius the Eternal um, is an OG yeah. member of the Emperor's Children. Yeah, he's horse heresy. He's and and not a side character either. Like, he's, he's like he's he's the dude. He's a yeah. So he was the the master swordsman of the emperor's children, um, and I believe was undefeated in every duel he had ever had while he was still in Astartes. Yeah, um, all that kind of happy horse shit. So uh, this episode though has to do with forty k, like forty k right now, yeah, kind of forty k. Right and uh, so I just want to talk about Lucius. We won't just cover the the episode. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about him. Yeah, it it, it brought on boring. it brought on something, but, but fun it brought to on wanting to talk about Lucius the Eternal. So Lucius the Eternal uh, was an Astartes and a a, a trusted uh, kind of one of the right hand dudes for Fulgrim, which is the Primarch of the Emperor's Children. Children. Um, Children. But was this master swordsman that had never been defeated, mm-hmm. which built up a lot of pride. Mm-hmm. Right. And the Emperor's children were already Falling. very proud people anyways. Oh. Well, they're called the Emperor's children. They're the first ones to wear the... Only ones. Only ones. Only ones allowed to wear the Aquila. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they were the only ones allowed to wear... Specifically, the Emperor's eagle. Not yeah. just the Aquila, but the Emperor's eagle yeah. insignia. He, they, they were the only ones allowed to wear that. And fun fun fact, the Emperor's children's war cry is still for the Emperor. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah, it is. But they're... It's all, yeah. It's Chaos. all, but it's like, but it, like, it's all their heraldry. Huh. It's on all, but it's 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 turned more into like a like a like a sort f u yeah f u kind of thing. Yeah, and because they still wear the the eagle wing on their mm-hmm. pauldron and stuff. Huh. Like they're yeah, they didn't give up any of that. That's funny. Um, yeah. were they always purple though? They were all so they were always purple and gold, which mm-hmm. was supposed to be the royal colors. Yeah, and then but when they went chaos, they are now pink. Yeah. Yeah. Or pink purple, yeah. Pink purple, yeah. They're very pink, very pink, pink people. And um, so, anyways, Lucius the Eternal, yeah. Uh, he is both mortal and immortal. Mm-hmm. He is uh, both blessed and cursed. Mm-hmm. Um, and still just loves a good duel, like Fucking he just people up. And uh, and wa- he only carries a blade, Would carries s- no no firearm. It's only the sword. Because that's yeah. just his fucking jam. That's so, what he does. And he's... He's good. He's... Would cut. you say he's a perpetual? No. Based no. on his curse? No, 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 no. no. Mm. It, it, he is perpetual in the idea that he... Comes back every He comes time. back. But perpetuals... Come back in like the same body. Their body regenerates. And here's the... So, yeah. His body regenerates just no. on a different dude's so body. he... So that's what that's actually a really good segue into why he's not a perpetual. Okay. So he can die. Yes. He can be defeated in battle, and he can die. However, there's there's an asterisk. Yeah, there's a, a uh, big asterisk. Big asterisk. One of those one of those uh, superscript ones next to it. Where you got to find the note <laughs> yeah. down in the contract you go underneath. To the footnotes and try to figure uh-huh. it out where it's at. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know that you know that terms and condition sheet you've never read. Yeah, yeah. Lucius. This motherfucker's one. got one. Yeah. All right. <laughs> So, and it essentially is, if you kill him, Mm -hmm. and you are proud of it at all. He comes back. At all. He doesn't come back. The spirit of him, 
that is now beloved by Slanesh gets forced into your body. Yeah. And basically rebirths him. And rebirths him, and then you become part of his armor. Right. So when you when he gets rebirthed, he looks like him. So he basically gets like a brand new body. Yeah. You're part of his armor. So if I mean, I guess if you weren't prideful in killing him, which I don't think a lot of Astartes wouldn't be prideful in killing like Slanesh's like, like best swordsman. Yes, yeah, you'd Slanesh's feel really good dude. about it at some point. I would say he's a perpetual. Well, it, the reason he's not one, he can't choose to not come back. Is that perpetual? That's can part, choose? Of, part of the perpetual thing is that the only way that a perpetual can die is just to decide that I'm done, oh, and okay. then they can die. Um, two. Uh, well, that makes that story much more sadder when Homeboy is coming through the warp trying to. Oh, when he's on the web, when he's on the webway walk yeah. and he just keeps melting and, he keeps and then coming back. And coming back Vulcan and literally could have just been like, "I'm done, I'm done." Yeah. And instead, he literally gets burned down to a skeleton, and, and then his skeleton stands back up. back up because he wills himself. Yeah, to that's yeah. wild. He's just like, "God damn it!" That's that makes that just... scene more sad now. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and that's why when you really understand how perpetuals work, mm. like that self-sacrifice of Vulcan of just like how many deaths did he suffer just to do his duty? Yeah. Um, this is Lucius capitalizing on pride. Right. So because he is essentially powered by pride, which is Slanesh's like whole jam, mm-hmm. is just that indulgence to the max. Mm-hmm. His is indulgence of skill. It's just like I, I'm so goddamn good that which one of you scrubs thinks they can, yeah, come even close to me. So, but being the best, the best of the best of Slash thing dies a lot. Dies well, a and lot. If, the if die, you're the best die. of the best, oh, if say. you're the best of the best and part of the Emperor's children, and and they were the pursuit of perfection, you're going to be really prideful. Well, yeah. and, and the EC were the children were. They were incredibly prideful, Snobbish. incredibly boastful. Like they, there was no humility. No. They, I mean, you're talking about people that built fortresses that were just called the perfect fortress. Yeah. <laughs> it, like yeah. it's it, yeah. like that was just what they named it. They remind me of like Greek Roman times, like togas and stuff. And their Primarch walks around in that a lot too. Oh, like the know. little like gold circlet toga. Yeah, yeah. the and laurels. Like, yeah, yeah, and huge. It, it, you know, and he's got alabaster skin. He's supposed to look like he was carved from a statue. Like, yeah. and it, it, before the remembrancers came along, they had like a whole staff of just painters and musicians and shit that just entertained them. It was just a bacchanal, just yeah. all the time. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> and, having um, a great time. Yeah, just, but just even in it. combat, they would practice and practice and practice and practice and practice and practice and practice so they didn't make mistakes. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was Lucius, and so everything was a you. It was okay to be obsessive if that obsession was creating improvement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that, so even in Lucius and the Horus Heresy, that was that. And then when they fell, it, Lucius' this whole thing, and I, God, I hope I don't fuck this backstory up. It was, so they fall, and Lucius starts fighting in Slanesh's court and starts fighting all of these. Yeah. Other like master swordsmen and shit and starts beating everybody. And so Slanesh getting pissed that that Slanesh's best thrown up against Lucius keep losing, keeps just throwing better and better and better and better at him until it turned into Okay, well, you belong to me anyways. Yeah. And now nobody you're the can beat you. So not only you're the best, but now you're gonna be the best forever yeah. so because if somebody is good enough to beat you you just get to be them which still makes you the best so what I th- what it I sounds th- like a really like like a weird like uh like lawyer speak like a way to be a lawyer like to way way to be the best like no 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 you just became the best right through you that were, now you are the best yeah you were beaten you it again but they were proud of it pride's your thing yeah you You're get to be the them best. now so yeah, it's stupid. So yeah. with Lucius, I know in his backstory, he was too beautiful for his own good, in a good way to say it. Like he was very, very beautiful, incredibly vain. face, yeah. very vain, beautiful white hair. Um, and when the EC started to fall to chaos, he took his knife and cut his face extremely deep, which is why he has those facial scars. Mm-hmm. When he starts to fall into chaos, which is really interesting for if you think about the 
the emperor's children searching for, for, for perfection. He's incredibly vain, mm-hmm. falls to chaos, and then kills that beauty from his face. Yeah. Yeah, it's I mean it's wild. Yeah. And then also, yeah, don't 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 go deep into Emperor's Children. You're yeah. gonna find a whole lot and of his, nightmares. His pride <laughs> carries over into like so that is it's like first we time see this I episode. Missed first time I missed Slanesh. <laughs> Half of his fights are literally because somebody like insulted the Legion. And so he's just like, Oh hell no. Yeah. And like he will travel oh, you're through coming me back. Travel through space just to be like I heard you said some shit. Heard you talking some shit, bro. It's like, <laughs> and then, like it's we'll like, throw down. Yeah. Just like, what? Like that was like a that was like three years ago. Yeah. And uh, and that's kind of what happened. The, the whole premise behind this episode about him was one of his fellow legionnaires. Yeah. Gets captured by the rare rare showing of the Exorcist chapter. Yeah. Right. Which is wild. Yeah. Which was I was just like and fuck a, yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a that's deep cuts pull. Yeah. Right that's there. a deep cut. And uh, so they capture him, and so they they set this whole thing up that Lucius and these other two emperor's children show up to, quote-unquote, because they're like, oh, he'll find me. Like, don't worry about it, he'll find me. And then you find out at the end of it that the whole reason he's gone to be found Mm -hmm. was that... He just wanted to kill him. He had insulted this dude. He had yeah, said, said that insult- You're a joke. Yeah. Like, and it wasn't even like a good insult. It was just like, a, you called me a joke. And it's just like, that's like normally, like people would just be like, eh, whatever. Yeah. You know? This dude literally hatched this whole plan of storming a fortress monastery, which is like one of the most impregnable things yeah. on the, on like in the universe. To settle a grudge. Because you taught him a piece of shit outside yeah, of the Because you were store. like, you're a joke. Yeah, you're a joke. Yeah. Like, you, guys you're, <laughs> you called me a poopy head. Yeah. <laughs> and now you have to die. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, well, now I'm going to cut your head off because of that. I'm going to not only cut your head off, I'm going to find you. and I'll, yeah. <laughs> I'll find you in one of the most secure places yeah. in the Imperium. And I'm going to piss off two of the most elite motherfuckers. On the way. In the most impenetrable place. Yeah. So to use them to get in to fuck you up. Yeah. It, like, it was it, it was the most, it, it was it was a ridiculous story. I'm just like, is this really what's going but on? That's it's great. That's the Emperor's Children. Like, everything is just... And I loved when he described his mission, and this is kind of everything. You so Lucius also has a permanent smile. Yeah, his mm-hmm. face is like um, cut yeah, he has really that Joker up. smile. He has yeah. that Joker smile with the fangs. So, but that's part of the lore is that he's got that permanent smile, and that was that was because when he was pretty, he's described of always having this grin, mm-hmm. knowing how good he is and how much better he is than ever. So even in his fights, like the the smile never fell off his face because he knew he had you. Yeah. Like he was. He was just waiting. He was just, he was just playing just that with good. you. Yeah. And so he was always smiling. So now that he's cursed and he's warped, he's fucked up by this demon energy, mm-hmm. he like has this permanent smile now. No, okay. Um, but he can't let shit go. Like he just because can't you hurt it. his pride. Yeah. And I also love how there's like certain like uh Astartes, like you have like your you have your Primarch demons who are supposed to be like the best buddies with like the the Chaos Gods, but then there's also like these people like their number twos, which is like I think actually they like him a little bit more. Well, because Lucius is described as being the favorite of the favorite of the Dark Prince, mm-hmm. but the Dark Prince, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, I think Bellicor. Bellicor is the Dark Bellicor Prince. Bellicor is isn't it? yeah, he's the Dark Prince, who is the only greater demon to receive blessings from everyone, blessings from all yeah. four gods, and apparently, so I'm assuming. Because they only have a reference that he is the Dark Prince's favorite. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming that that means that Bellicor's like, this fucking guy. He's my guy. He's my dude right He's here. But what I'm talking about is like, you know, there's, like, for example, Death Guard. There is, you know, Mortarian. But then there's also Typhus. And I think, you know, Nurgle likes Typhus Nurgle a little bit more. Nurgle straight up took both of them because they hate each other. Yeah. He but then like, there's there's also Angron and um, the uh, the Betrayer. Oh, Karn. Karn. Karn, you know, and it's like they're one and two, and then now there's, you know, there's Fulgrim and there's Lucius, and it's like, eh, does... By the way, there does, is a rumor out there. Oh, I love Strong rumors. rumor. Strong Pim uh, Pam rumor. That we are going to see the return of the Emperor's Children to 40K. Really? And I don't mean, like, there's going to be an upgrade sprue and some stickers. Like, the rumor is the plastic army that's coming 
is going to be is a dedicated EC. Well, it's about time. It's about army. time. It's about yeah. time. Uh, but a dedicated EC army would be dope. This is just good. rumor. It's one hundred percent speculation. We've talked about noise marines, and they've never. Uh, well, there's really been gone there's been noise marines upgrades, um, but they've never like done. Like, and then the they full... do like every once in a while, every couple of years, they release that one noise marine that you can get. That's like thirty five dollars for that one fucking marine. Yeah. But the only demon primark that's missing. Yeah, is Fulgrim. 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 Yeah, and if they drop Fulgrim and they drop the whole army behind it, it's That's gonna be the hottest, I don't, hottest I don't, army. Yeah. I don't need another army, but I need some Pepto Bismol Pink Boys in my life. Uh, fuck them. Yeah. I mean, well, dope. then if that is the rumor, Fulgrim's technically not dead. He's just missing. He comes back. My theory is on its way to be number one. What's your theory again? That it's going to be that. We have the lion that came back. Mm-hmm. We have Gilliman. Girly man. We have Magnus. Uh-huh. We have now Angron. We will get Fulgrim. So four that's four. three versus two. Who's right the off. other one non trader from 30K that's technically missing and not dead? Is Lehman Russ. Right. Yeah, yeah we know Russ is coming back. They're yeah. going to make a mini pack to get rid of the Tyranids. You think so? Because Chaos hates Tyranids. Well, everybody hates everybody the Tyranids. Hates if Tyranids. Tyranids take over, which is that's the story that they're pivoting if, on right now, plus if Tyranids if, take over, if, everybody loses. Yes. If Tyranids eat everybody in the galaxy, the warp collapses yeah. anyways. So I think yeah. Chaos and like the humans are going to make a pact that's like, hey, let's get rid of the Tyranids. I'm interested to see where this narrative goes. Because like the next big book that's going to drop is actually another book dealing with the EC. Yeah, which is I brought up too, which I was like, which there's is, a lot of EC movement. Is, is Gene Father. So mm-hmm. Gene Father is about Fabius Bile, which and is unfortunate name. Fabius Bile is the is was the chief apothecary of the Emperor's children. Yeah, like, and he's the res- he's responsible for the Noise Marines. He's the mm-hmm. one that did all the vocal cord surgery that let them yep. have that scream mm-hmm. and fucked with everything. He's like the genetic manipulator. Manipulator. Yeah. He's basically Frankenstein, Doctor Frankenstein, um, yeah. in the forty k. Yeah. Doesn't he like work on the servitors too or something? He works on everything. He works on everything. Yeah. So, on everything. and this whole story is supposed to be this like, I, I like the way they described it where they were like, it's space Mensa. Yeah. Because I guess like the greatest minds in the universe are getting together and Fabius Bile finds out it's happening. So he just like invited himself. <laughs> he was just like, yeah, Whoa, I'm one of those smart apparently, ones too. I mean, apparently my invite got lost in the mail. He just yeah. like crashes I mean, a it, wedding. That seems very <laughs> Fabius Bile. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie though. So it's having yeah. read the stories about Belisarius Call, if Fabius Bile shows up, he's just gonna be like, So I was thinking. Do you want to talk? So are we gonna sit in the corner and talk? Well, because Belisarius Call apparently has unpolluted gene seed for all 20 original Yes. Uh all yes. 20 original Primarchs. <gasps> he's yeah. got it all. He's I guess like all. in a bathtub in the back. Like I don't know where the fuck he's keeping this shit, yeah. but he's apparently he got it everybody. all. But then and Fabius then- Bile is the gene father. He's the one that knows more about genetic manipulation in space marines than anybody else. So it turns into like, what the fuck's happening there? Yeah, they're selling the story as like a Fabius Vile versus uh, Crawl. Barcelona. Is the gene seed tainted? Nope, nope. It's apparently the original pure strain. No, like the current gene seed. If you yes, were to yes. make totally more... broken. It's it's because we've it's been pulled and implanted and pulled and implanted too many times. Yeah. So it's like making a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. It's gone so, through the fax machine too many times. So what they what basically <laughs> no more works, toner. The, no, we're so out of toner. Mar, um, the Martians on Mars they have like a stock of pure gene seed for the loyalists. Yeah. And Apparently, they just, Call has them all. But Call has them all. But so what that happens is like they basically put an order in to uh, the Martians, being like, "Hey, you know, space wolves here. You know, we need a little run a little low. Can yeah, we get some more. We need we need some fresh stock. Can I get like uh, I don't know, couple thousand, couple get, couple couple ten thousand. Couple so thousand, and they rebuild. They they like grow from like a single one, so it's like always pure, Wait. as much as they can. My gears are moving. My gears are moving. Okay. Great. If you have pure gene seed from the Primarchs, yes. could you create, regrow the Primarch from that gene seed? They, they tried. tried. It didn't work. Didn't work. With who? Horus. Why didn't it work though? Uh, because not- it didn't have. Essentially, it didn't have the Emperor's juju. Yeah. It was just, yeah, genetically it was right, but it wasn't the same I thing am, because there's also am, a lot of war I am, shitty. I am paraphrasing. <laughs> yeah. She's going have the juju. Uh, but essentially, there was something in the creation of the Primarchs that, yes, was science. 
it also has something to do with the greatest psyker in the galaxy having done it. So he was able to imbue certain things into it. So they made a genetic copy, but it didn't have what the French call a certain... Je ne sais quoi. quoi. I don't know what. Uh, it didn't have that. Great timing. Good job. And uh, yeah, it just... It, it, it didn't have it didn't have that that a punch that oomph. The oomph. The, the it's little, like moxie it's that like it doesn't matter like how good you are at making steak at home something about going to like a new york style stri- like steak yeah, dinner just yeah. tastes a little and you're like why why i'm using the same beef i'm, I'm using, using the same everything every- same. why is this different yeah and so like they don't know why it didn't work other than like the emperor must have known something we don't know yeah, so th- they can make a genetic copy of a Primarch, but it's not a Primarch. Okay, but is the em- the Emperor is waking up, technically. There is... There so, is the Shadow way. Behind the Throne novels do have some throwaway lines, like, you know, he spoke, or, you know, I had a vision of him rising, stuff like that. So there's there's some setups. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. that's. Could I, you I, technically I recreate... The Primarchs then yes. to help with the Tyranid crisis. The Emperor could through remake psychic ability sitting on the throne. If, if he gets up, but not and, up, but like could he psycher out? No, no. support. Oh, so he has to actually physically. Yeah. Be there. So he had like a lab. Why well, know that? Like the whole nine yards. Um, it, he injected something. There's something about him making it that mm-hmm. just imbued something extra. Love. Plus, we. we well, we also know that he has a he had a not love. he had a pact not, for knowledge nope. with all four chaos gods, and he used that knowledge to make those primarchs. Yeah. So that knowledge was injected into the primarchs, and so just making a genetic copy doesn't have that put in. It doesn't have the eleven herbs and spices. Yeah, <laughs> I just really want Horus to come back. You do, <laughs> I do. I think he's still in the war. Yeah, That's I think I don't think he's actually dead, dead. But I think it's going to turn into the emperor's a god. Mm-hmm. And, no, he's, yeah. and he's put his chosen son in the warp to help start manipulating that so that he can control both sides. Yeah. I think that's where it's going. You think so? Yep. 100%. That would be nice. But yep. well, we're not going to see that for another 20 years. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's okay. Uh, keep buying plastic. Yeah, but, right? You know, uh, but the there's car. also there's some Legion daddies out there that never trusted him. And sometimes you just got to go like, you know, Trust isn't given, it's earned. And in those cases, you just got to admit that Russ was right. Wow. I had more questions for you on this I topic. Yeah. I didn't want to end it so soon. It's not soon. How long have we been here? <laughs> We've been at this an hour. Oh, God. I'm so yeah. sorry. So Yeah. Oh, shit, we have. I yeah. Had, I had more questions. Yeah, this has been an Like, hour. what do you think they're going to do with all that gene seed? Well, that that sounds like a whole nother uh, conspiracy episode that we could get into. Yeah, we can definitely get into that. But, when is uh, that book launch? No, they haven't put a date yet. They haven't put a date. It okay. was just a, a hey, this is coming. This is but coming. We, it's yeah. not on pre-release yet. So it's, um, it, it's going to be something that's going to change things because basically the idea is that Call is getting all the smart, all the, the all Mensa, the smart people, all the smarts, the smarty people yeah. to figure out this rift thing and being yeah. like, all right, we got to get rid of this, right? Like we're all we're all on the same page. Yeah, this sucks. So, it's yeah. going to be interesting. Yeah. Forrest didn't do it's going to be super interesting. <laughs> Forrest was right. Uh, so. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> uh, go check out Second Pitch Beer Company. Yeah, on all of the socials. Yeah, and Battle Pub. Battle Pub Games, also yeah. on all of the socials. On the socials, uh, and uh, yeah. I have been informed that the show is now going on YouTube, and I have no choice about it. So you're welcome. Uh, if you, if you, <laughs> now you could just see what we actually look like. Yeah, so, don't do that. Uh, well, hey, people, it's on video on seen, Spotify. Yeah, we put the video up like of me, like super close. That was the best comment ever. Yeah, that, just I like, could use, I could use less extreme close ups on Jim, please. Yeah, like, just one like, of our customers awesome. came in and was like, I didn't like that one. And I was like, <laughs> I didn't like that one. <laughs> well, don't you know. enjoy this. It's an audio show, anyways, you fucking weirdos. Yeah. Anyways, uh, go check all that out. Um, in the meantime, we highly encourage that you go find some games, drinks, and hijinks. Yeah, go have fun. Because that's what fun today. we're all about here. Uh, in the meantime, I think I'm going to go try and convince Jim to have another round with me before we call this a night. I think it's a good idea. All right, guys. Hit him with it, Jim. Bye.